And I'm back. I'm back here. I have my. I have. Uh, uh, my sketchbook here. And uh, I'm gonna adjust my microphone, all that stuff. You know, I think. I think I might have to adjust some things because. Uh, not showing up, so. That's gonna work a little better here. Okay. I gotta move my little icon here down here. Okay. And I think that's good. I think that, that'll be good. I'm gonna move some stuff around so I could actually draw on my panel here. That's gonna be really important. Um, I have uh, a UG. Um, UG drawing screen, right? Right? And that's what I use primarily to draw with. Oh, with. I have this little fancy pen, and it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I like it. I don't need my keyboard for this, so I'll be, I'll be nice and close. All right. Let's transition away. And um, <clears throat> let me adjust the height here real quick. You might hear some noise. I apologize. You may or may not. I don't know. Okay. Um, you know, actually, I do need the keyboard because. Uh, there is some stuff like the space bar really, really handy. Um, so I'm using Autodesk Sketchbook by Autodesk, and um, it's really, really handy. Uh, it's probably the best drawing um, program I've ever used. And I've used Photoshop. If you look down here, I have all the photo. I have all the Adobe Elements stuff. Not Adobe Elements. Um, well, yeah, I guess it is the Adobe Elements. The, the Adobe Suite, and uh, I use just about everything on there um character animator uh, after effects you know um learning those and then i have brushes here that i love these are my brushes and they they do all all sorts of different things so um let me see if i can check out my recent um yeah i have been working on like you know i don't so I was I was just like goofing around. Um, I drew Sa Sabin Sabin, um, uh, and I didn't really like it. You know, it was a little it was a little too um, I don't know something something didn't jive with me about it. You know, so uh, it's a little I don't know it's a little weird. Uh, let me see here another recent one. Um, I had her. That I was working on. I kind of like her. I don't know. Um, I might want to give her a bigger cheekbone, maybe here. Kind of improve that because she kind of looks like a little lioness or something with that shallow cheekbone. So um, we'll see. Um, but I do want to get into let's see uh, some proportions. And actually, before I even start proportion, I'm gonna go uh, into. Um, a really cool, uh, uh, what is it, um, tool here, and it's perspective tool, and it's really great. If you know what you're doing, essentially, um, what, if you know what perspective is, it's really, really helpful. So, one point, two point, three point, and then there is the fisheye mode, which is really cool, really, really intuitive. Um, so if anybody knows what one point is, it's um, it's your point is right here, and and everything that you draw converges on this one point. 
I need to adjust my microphone here a little bit. All right, so everything that you draw converges on one point. And so I have a pen right now. Let's see if it's pressure sensitive. It is. So um, if you notice, I'm, uh, I'm drawing this line and I actually don't have to um, draw it exactly there because uh, um, like I'm, I'm actually kind of pressed off way over the edge so I, I have my starting point and then I could just you know uh, it's really smart I could eat I could either draw up and down right uh, left or right perfectly right and I could just be all over the screen right now and it'll do whatever it wants to and I want to start from here and then and it, it knows when you're going to that diagonal which is really really cool um, so I want to like say do this and it'll always converge on that center point right so if anybody knows uh, one point perspective is that uh, you could have horizontals verticals, straight verticals straight horizontals and diagonals leading out of your um, what is it uh, out of your vanishing point this is what a vanishing point is so you could create just about anything this is meant for like hallways you know anything for hall you could actually do just about anything with it um, and uh, let me switch to racer mode so I could show you um, I chose okay I'm gonna erase this line I'm gonna erase this line and this line Ooh, whoa, 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 whoa. No, don't move that uh, and this line right so um, here I could just build like a you know a hallway you know instead and um, like here's here's some roofs or something or here's another building and you could draw like this um, using this one point perspective right so let's say there is another building right and I'll just use the eraser tool and erase uh, this right and so um, and you could what reline this up to reinforce the lines you know and just reinforce everything um, do you want be groovy right and make all the make all the necessary adjustments like that and it's really neat um, this is my favorite drawing program right now because of this tool right so here's here's the one point perspective and this line right here is your horizon line that blue line can you guys see me um, am I like in in the screen, I don't think you can see me. Let me move the camera. Ta -da, there you go. Hey, you can see me. Um, which doesn't matter. Um, uh, so, like, if I wanted to have like a, a small little lip here or something, I could, and then like that, and then like that, right? And then erase this line here. It's really, it's really intuitive. It really uh, helps um, speed things up. Uh, let's see here, there we go. For really fine details, you want to zoom in, right? And then uh, this, the outer ring just gives you the hand. This is the zoom in. This is the rotate tool, and uh, just do that. Um, I generally just go over um, and then erase later so I know where things are you know you know so it doesn't matter um, I'm on pen mode and I want to create this other line to create a ridge right so zoom out from that right so you could do a whole bunch of this um, kind of thing with one point perspective which is awesome let's see another building here going in like that right? and um, click that tool off you, you uh, click it off and then you're back on your pen let's say you want to do like like there's a dude over here so I'm just gonna sketch in like a figure right here's my dude here's his head and he's just standing there let's say he's like a cowboy like or a pirate with a feather in his cap I don't know he's got he's got a gun holding a gun right and he's just sitting here and he's he's waiting for you right so let's give him some legs some feet 
right, just like that. Um, and a bat, apparently. So, uh, it all converges on this dude. He's a little disproportionate, whatever, I don't really care. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is really handy. So, this is if you want to focus in on one main, you know, uh, character or one main event. You know, everything leads into here. That doesn't mean you could have multiple things happening. Um, like you could have a window up here. Let's move. Oh, you know what? No, I don't want to move it since since uh, what is it? Since my all my lines, you don't you never want to move this once you get started. I mean, it's okay if you do, but you don't want to do it. So let's say like, oh well, there's a window over here, and um, there's uh, there's some dude that's gonna you know, be peering out of it, you know, or something like that. And there he is, you know, he's like, what the hell's going on out here? Uh, he's just sitting there and he's got like his, like if I've been playing Battleground, so this is another dude and he's got, he's got a, a UMP, right? And he's like, oh dude, I'm so ready. And he's got that, that face mask, you know, you know, and he's got like a huge level three backpack and stuff and he's just peering out he's like okay i'm gonna take this guy down who has like uh, looks like a baseball cap right and a handgun and a machete yeah so uh that's one point perspective you know you, you could lead in your uh, your attention you know and um there's an artist that uh uses this a lot um i forgot his name uh he's really famous um yeah, he does. Uh, he does all these American style uh, paintings. He poses. Every Anyways, it's really good stuff. He's uh, he's one of my favorite artists, which which sounds like a lie because I don't even know his name, but it's true. Uh, can I just blank everything? No, I'll just new. Nope. Okay. So that was one point. A two point perspective. You have two vanishing points, and what's cool about this is. These vanishing points can be adjusted, right? So here's your horizon line. So if you wanted to make like a really dynamic comic book panel or something, um, here's your horizon line. And uh, like, let's say you're building. First, I'm gonna draw the horizon line. Just after I screw it up. Like here's your horizon line. That's not even it because it's so close to, let's see if, See if I can do it. Right on the money. Okay, got it. Yeah. All right. So let's just have that as the horizon line. And erase this crap. All right. Um, so you have like buildings here, you know, and. Uh, Um, so on a, on a two point perspective, your horizon line, um, you, you only have verticals available. You don't have horizontals. And what I mean by that is uh, perfect horizontal. So you can't do um, uh, left and right perfect horizontals. There's always going to be a, uh, a diagonal. Right, so here's my other diagonal, and then this is the vertical right here. Okay, so that's a building, in case anybody is confused about what a building looks like. Okay. And here's another one. And it's all in perfect uh, two-point perspective, right? You have the two vanishing points, and... Um, See, let's have like another addition here. I could just whatever, you know, it doesn't even matter what it is. Just something, something else. Maybe. So to understand this more, um, 
I could show you with a straight horizon line so you guys can understand this or see this better. Um, so let me let me move down here and kind of zoom in just a tiny bit. Move these down. And it'll kind of snap to um, your perfect uh, horizon. So let's say this is a new comic book panel and you just want to be and you just want to like go up and down, you know, you just want it to be straight, it doesn't matter. And then, um, so you, you're like, okay, I'm looking at this building here, I'm going to draw this horizon line. And uh, you're here looking at a building, right? And this is the roof, and um, let's say it's like a bank or something, I don't know. Right. There's a sign. I don't know. And here's gigantic doors. These gigantic doors that you can go through or whatever. And it's got steps that you could uh, climb up to your bank and, you know, whatever. Look into the sins of your past. Right. It's all in 2D pers or, uh, two point perspective here. And then there's windows here, you know. Oh, whoa, 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 that's the wrong direction. Alright, um, so, like, if you understand, so, in two-point perspective, you see two sides of a box, right? Imagine a box. You see two sides of them. One point of perspective, generally, you only see one. Um, oh, this is still two. <laughs> so it, one one side is, is generally what you see, and it's generally the inside of a box or the outside of a box. And you only see one. You don't see the roof, and you don't see the ground. That's how you can remember that. Uh, let's see. So um, in two point, it's kind of like a worm's eye view. Right, you're kind of looking down below, up at something, and you could work the other way too, um, as well. So if you want to draw, let's let's just pretend that um, I have another one over here, another little panel, and uh, I'll draw a tiny little horizon line here for myself. And now we're like, okay, well, what about um, if I want to be up in the sky? Okay, well that's cool. You're, you're up in the sky, and you're looking down, right, at this. Now, two-point perspective doesn't quite work with, uh, with, um, whoa, 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 uh, supposed to go there. doesn't quite work with, uh, um, bird eye view. Right, and I'll show you why. There's, uh, and it's simply because of this reason. It works better with um, um, where my view. Right, uh, you could you could totally do something, but the the verticals just don't look right for some reason. They don't look right, right? So I wouldn't recommend using two point if you're uh, doing something like bird eye view like this. So kind of looks terrible, right? Yeah. So let's do a new, you know, and now we get into some really cool stuff. Three-point perspective. I love three-point perspective. Everything looks so cool. All your vanishing points should be way kind of outside of outside of um, your canvas because they should vanish, you know, way out there. So. I try to give myself as much canvas as possible. Stuff out here, I don't, I don't want to deal with. Um, so now, now that we have that, we can begin. Uh, so I'll draw. Well, I can't really draw a horizontal line. Um, actually, I can. I'll use the ruler <laughs> to draw my like a split, a panel split, and you could see um, down below. You could see exactly where on the page it is and at what angle it is so that's all I need okay 
So now I'm in perspective. You hit that perspective button and now everything's in perspective. I'm using a pen and this is all, this is going to be all, and you notice all those lines, you see that X with, with the, or the hashtag, I don't know, that's a star. I guess every one of those lines adjusts, depending on where you are on the canvas, it all adjusts, which is really cool, right? So, um, let's say above here, I want to draw a building, again, I'll draw a building, this time from a worm's eye view, right? And that so if you're like in New York and you look straight up you know this is what you'll see except the except the skyscrapers in New York they kind of do that weird bending thing because like a slight um, change in uh, what is it uh, I don't know atmospheric something out there I guess they assure it's straight but whatever it's it's still crazy creepy Right, so here's my corner, and I'm gonna come down with it. So this is a bird eye, sorry, worm eye view of a, of a building, which is more typical. This is how it looks, you know, wider at the base, skinny at the top, you know, with atmospheric um, perception. You know, everything gets smaller as you as it gets further away. Atmospheric depth, right? And you could totally draw like. Um, like lines you know, to represent your windows or something if it's like one of those mirrored buildings and if you keep it even up here it'll stay just as even down here right so actually I recommend starting from a small point and going to the big point okay because it'll it works a little better right, so keep it even And it does get slightly larger as you hit the bottom here, right? And so um, there is no horizontal, right? There's no horizontal space. So everything is in three point perspective. Doors, windows, everything, right? Just like that. And you can you base things off of um, off of your horizontal or horizon line. So let's say you did want to base to this. This is how you'd make it, right? So you'd, you'd finish it up down here like that. Oh, oh no, I guess you wouldn't. Um, I I screwed up here. This goes way up here. Um. I'm just gonna undo all that. Okay, this is pretty decent having a horizon line. So anything be so anything below the horizon line now is going to be that really cool bird eye view. This isn't the horizon line, by the way. No, no, no. The horizon line is down here still. But um, for the sake of how to draw differently. This is it, right? So, uh, this is not how it goes. Sorry, I did mess up. The horizon line is that line, but I have to move my actual horizon line. Up to here. So it's going to be a little skewed because well, you'll see why. So now I can draw my building from bird, bird eye view. And this is a shallow bird eye view. The deeper I get, the more intense it will get. What the hell? Why is it still? Maybe I have to, maybe I have to also get my vanishing point down. I guess I do. I thought it was smarter than that. I thought it mirrored it, but I guess not. Oops. 
just erase all those. Am I not doing it right? Do I not have any more undoes? No, I don't. Ran out of undoes. At least I didn't run out of underoos. Eee. Okay. Sorry about that. Take this down. Take me down to the Paradise City. There's hot dogs and stuff. All right. Okay. Now, <laughs> let me see. Yep, now, now, yep, this is it. Okay, so you're at a shallow bird eye view. You're just a flying bird, right? You're just kind of like chilling. You're like, oh, I'm going to go check out these buildings. Right, and they all go down like so. There you go. I'll come down past some clouds or some fluffy little clouds. And here's, you know, here's like a, I don't know, another thing up here. You know, or something just hanging out. Radio tower, I don't know. Doesn't really matter. All right. So you could draw on this perspective all you want, like that. Um, buildings tend to look a lot better um, when you're looking down on them or you're looking from from below. All right? They look just really decent. Ugh. Ah. Ooh, my back. Ugh. This is killing my back. I wonder what it is. Maybe it's this chair. I don't know what's going on with it. Fisheye is so interesting. It's so interesting. I've never really like understood this perspective and how it was done. I um, mean, this like really automates it um, like a lot. So let's say. Um, uh, I'm just gonna draw like a dude. So um, here's kind of his face, and uh, I don't know. Um, his jaw, I guess. I don't know. Right. But uh, everything is slightly arced, right? It's kind of crazy. You can and you could do a lot of things. You could do a top-down view of something, um, like if you want to do the world, you know, globe. Let's say. And I don't know, just like okay, well, here's a building on top of of this world here, you know. Um, And it's all slightly, slightly curved, right? And you could even make it smaller so things have more um, dramatic curvature to them, right? You know, and so the smaller it is, you know, the more, I guess anything outside of that is, is no go, which sucks kind of, but it's okay. Right, but uh, everything is just so, I don't know. <laughs> it's really neat. I love fisheye. It has some cool effects. And you can mess with that um, and check things out. This is, um, this kind of seems like this is what they would use for um, Ghost in the Shell, when you're, or like, um, when you're looking through that peephole on your door, you know? This is what things look like, you know, out there. Like, here's your hallway, you know? And there's a dude just standing there or something with a gun, right? Um, there's a door. Open 
open door. Yeah, you can do a lot with this. I, I really like this perspective a lot. You might have to fix some stuff later on, but that's okay, you know. Really cool. So check out Fisheye if you have this program. It's really, really neat. I love it. You can do a lot of touch-ups. My eraser is set to uh, super erase, so like no matter how lightly I touch, it's going to erase whatever. I don't, I don't really care because this is just a tutorial. So you can do a lot of cool cyber stuff, you know, with this perspective. Um, Serial Experiment Lane um, did a lot of this, did a whole bunch of this kind of perspective um, because of. Uh, I guess how the show is portrayed, you know, um, spying, looking at stuff, um, it was really kind of a crazy show, if you've ever seen it. It's an anime, by the way. Um, I liked it, but also it was very confusing, but I really, I still liked it. Um, new. Um... So I want to get into something called proportion on the human body, and um, you could use the ruler on it. Um, it's not like it's you know you don't have like inches on here. Uh, I don't know if you do or not. No, you don't. Um, there's other other really cool tools like the uh, curve tool. You could make really cool um, curves any any size you want, really, um, which is really neat. Uh, but I like the ruler tool um, for perspective and how I use it is is for marking so um, let's say I want things to like stop and end there right and so but the, the way to find a good center is to um, so you have the top and the bottom this is where your feet will be this is where the tippy top of your head will be and the way you find the center is just go back and forth until and get narrower and narrower and and that's a pretty good center to me that looks about right right um you might want to go above center just to kind of block it in and see which one looks the best you know um and so this is it's always nice to have the center you know of something um the hips are a center you know and it's not there's not a fine line, and I'll show you why. Um, so, the if you want to start measuring things, I'll tell you right now. Um, your head, I don't like it. This, uh, your head. Let's say this is your head. Okay, and your neck. Right, um, your head, and it's kind of like one and a half. Um, shoulder, you know, so you could fit one and a half heads and where your shoulders are, okay? And that's like good proportion, okay? And and generally, like about there, or maybe two heads, actually, it's two heads because there's one half, one half, you know, maybe a little broader. Um, and it makes a, a really slight difference. Um, I usually go one and a half because I don't draw the other shoulder, so one and a half and then the shoulder, sorry. Um, two heads. Two head width, you know, is, is good. I'm just going to leave this line up. Um, and then, so, how about the, you know, arm length? W w how do you determine that? It's actually, if you raise your arm right now above your head, you'll notice that the elbow, the elbow is as high as the top of your head, right? So, this distance right here, from where this joint moves, this distance is is the distance to your elbow, right? And that's your elbow joint. So I usually just draw a circle, right? So that's good. Um, and so what about your forearm? Again, um, if you bend your arm, you'll see the wrist match up with your shoulder. 
So it's about that. Okay. Same thing here. Elbow. And it's about the same as your the length of this. Right? So um, this is good proportion. Your body, so if you if you squeeze your elbow down, you'll notice that it kind of aligns with the bottom of your ribs. Right? So here's where your ribs should be. And where should the, the sternum be but halfway up, right? This is, your rib cage is huge. It's a monster, right? So um, I usually draw in the rib cage just so I know. And the space between your stomach and your actual hip is really, really small. It's actually very, very, very tiny. It's about like this, right? Um, let me see if I could come up with, uh, no, nah, I can't. <laughs> Um, I guess it's the width of your whole hand, at least my hand. Like, it's the width of that, you know? So, um, your hand kind of varies. I've seen, I just saw a woman today. She had the meatiest hands I've ever seen in my life, man. They were like, they were, if you've ever seen that Seinfeld episode where, um, like the, the, the Jerry dates, uh, Jerry dates this woman. She's got like super big old man hands. Man, this lady had like pig hands. Man, they were massive. They were they were huge. They were really like I think she either traded steel for a living or something. So hands kind of vary, right? Um, just you you can uh, make them as big or as small as you want because really people people uh, have different hands. Um, and it really also depends on how close or far away you are, you know, to a hand. So um, you have your stomach, you have your, your thing. And, and where does the belly button land, huh? Right here. Right, right about there. Right. So the pelvic bowl is the next area, right? So kind of the width of your thing. And this is where the pelvic bone starts. Right, and then there's the pelvic bowl. So this area right here is just about the same as that area, right? And it goes down and then you have your bladder, right? And then, so there's another, there's another whole nother section for you to draw. So one, two, three, all right? And then, you know, you have your anatomy parts, right? So you have your joints, you have your leg joints here, you have a, you have a nice, uh, uh, what is it called? The, this is the humerus. And you have your two, the radial ulna, and then this is your, oh, it's the leg break is super terrible. If you break your leg, it's horrible. Oh, I forgot. I don't know why I forgot. It's so, it's such a common common name I know I blanked out I'm blanking out anybody know it can type it in um, so I'm not gonna meet my goal of going to the bottom here right which is fine I'll just readjust this later um, so this your knees um, typically are halfway down right so uh, your lower side is Pretty much the same size as your upper side so not including this you, you measure from here to here right and let's see if there's a way to measure that by cheating here uh, kind of like like that right from there to there um, that's that's not right there okay that's kind of like where you should end up, right? And this is this is to your bottom joints. So not your feet, your bottom joints. So halfway to that is right here, right? And then you have your bottom joints. So your femur, 
That's right, your femur connects this T to these bones. Um, I forgot what they're called. I used to remember all this stuff. Right, and then your feet, like hands, vary in size. Your big toe, right? Big toe, All right? So, um, and muscles. Well, muscles are muscles, man. You know, some people are skinny, some people are slender. I'm. I uh, just recently lost uh, what I consider to be a lot of weight. I am uh, no longer a fat slob uh, that I used to be. I lost 20 pounds, almost 20 pounds, in in a month. Uh, by changing my lifestyle and stopped, I stopped eating sugar and dairy and cheese and bread, all the crap, the poison, essentially. Um, lost a ton of weight doing that. I haven't weighed 179 since I was, I don't know, 18, 19 years old. So that's kind of crazy to me, you know. So muscles, here's muscles, you know, um, and and so I'm talking about muscles here, and I discovered that. What I thought, I thought it was like, oh man, I'm kind of big and strong. No man, that was all fat, you know. So I'm kind of skinny now, um, which I appreciate. And I'm still not done losing weight. There's still like fat on me, you know. Uh, it takes kind of a while to get rid of all that. I'm gonna say it again: poison from your body. So, um, you know, and here is your shoulders that go into your triceps and biceps and then you know um these really cool muscles that wrap around um into your forearms right and then the pectoral muscles which um you know actually are pretty large as well they go down all the way to the top of your sternum here um like so right and then there is just a, a nice variety of muscles that go to your stomach, right? And your neck, depending on, again, depending on the size, the width, you know, you could be like this hulking maniac with these awesome lats, you know, or just a skinny dude with no lats at all. You know, um, and the head size, uh, head shape varies. Head size doesn't generally vary unless you have a strange rare disease or something, which, you know, happens. But this is generally the a good proportion right here. Right? It's not everybody's proportion, but it's a good start. It's a really good start. So if you, if you, uh, so like maybe the width of the hips are a little bit longer, but how I determine the width of, of the top and the down of the hips is actually this space right here. So going from going from the top of the sternum down to the belly button, down to uh, the pelvic bowl here um, should be your next area here. So, um, but pelvises arc up a little bit too, you know, so you got to keep all that in mind. This is the top, this is the bottom, and that's kind of where I do my measurements. Now, and not everybody's different, so, you know, but it's a good start. It's a good start. Um, let's do a little bit of... He's on fire, I guess. Um, I don't know. I could do, like, a robot, I guess. Uh, I just discovered he's a robot. up later and uh, maybe the nose is gonna peek out a little bit but that's it no mouth right because he's just like the perfect head shape robot right, there we go and he's uh, seriously on fire or something here's his little nubs for ears it's they're like super sensitive I don't know diaphragms or something it's got human skin, so it wraps around, and, and uh, I'll give him, like, not really big muscles, but, you know, he's lean. Modeling after, modeling him after myself here. Alright, so, here we go. And, uh, here's your little, uh, collarbone, otherwise known as clavicle. 
Uh, and it's kind of, this is your, like, uh, the upper uh, area, like this, there's things rest in here as well, you know, your, your, your trachea, all that stuff to kind of rest in this area. Lungs are very sensitive because they're, uh, you know, there's a, the bottom diaphragm, there's a top diaphragm, and then there's a pelvic bone diaphragm, um, and everything is airtight, you know, it's very, it's very vacuumed. I should say so um, you know that's why you get a lung puncture it's so dangerous because you lose that pressure and you can't breathe anymore because your diaphragm the, the thing that expands here and contracts um, is uh, is not working properly you know so it's just it's inhaling air through the hole in your chest if you get shot or pierced or whatever the worst one is if you get a hole in your diaphragm oh no, that's no, 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 it's a big problem. Why am I talking about this? I don't know, who cares? All right. <laughs> Can I erase this giant ugly line? Okay, so there's a clavicle and maybe he's got a t-shirt on or something. So clothes is really tricky because, for me especially, because um, I draw my people first like like naked you know and so then I want to throw on some clothes and I hate it because um, it covers up so much of the detail that I like you know like this I don't know I just like the detail and all of a sudden it's just like gone because I throw on a pair of clothes you know so all this stuff can get erased all of a sudden and uh, what's nice about a shirt is where my pelvic uh, where my pelvic uh, bowl is I could just keep you know that line there so I could erase a lot of this a lot of these lines now because um, it's a shirt now and shirts fold differently and have different characteristics than a human body or sorry human skin does right and of course duh right so first off Shirts like to suck in a lot of form, so they're they straighten things out. There's you don't have a lot of um, like rigidness or not rigidness. You have a lot more rigidness. You don't have um, rigidity. Rigid, rigid. I give up. Um, rigidity, and uh, you know a shirt is uh, your body is not as rigid, right? It's like really. Um, Really flexible skin is flexible it's it's uh, stretchy it's you know all sorts of stuff so um, this is an important shadow here you know uh, this is also it can be extended either way um, another important shadow give him that little nose right, and uh, he's got like that one those little lies, beady little lies. Curious what just happened to him. Maybe I'll give him like a mouth, a robot mouth, standard robot mouth, like that. Yeah, that looks good. That looks good. <laughs> All right. So, um, clothing is more flowing, right? There's just a lot of flow, and uh, and maybe there's like folds and stuff and shadows and. Some are unintentional, some are, you know, so, um, you know, some have kind of rules to them, some don't. You know, I, I usually like to do, like, little tiny wrinkles coming in from the outside, and then depending on the tightness of the shirt, you know, I'll, I'll do some more, but that's about it there, you know. Um, you have some creases here in the arms. You know, depending on how tight the shirt is, and uh, some shoulder shading here. I usually I like the pen tool um, a lot on this because it just gives me the detail I want. You know, so all right. So here is uh, here's his arm. 
Let's say it's a mechanical arm. I like where that circle is. So I'm just gonna do that. Right, and uh, this is like got like other things going on here, you know, wires and such. I just did the cross beams. A lot easier. Who who knows what the purpose is? Who cares? It looks cool. Um, I'm sure this elbow does something too, like pound people in the face, you know, whatever. And then, uh, yeah, this forearm has like a blaster in it or something. I don't know. I don't like how this hand is shaped, so. I'll get rid of it and do something else with it. I don't know what yet. I'll, I'll look at it later. All right. Same thing with this hand. Um, this arm. I'm actually going to leave it as skin. Or maybe I should do wires on this side or something. They're, they already kind of look like wires, so you know, they're coming down. Make some over like that. And, uh, all you have to do for wires is just shade them properly, you know, so they're cylindrical, they look cylindrical, you know, coming down like that. And they also look like muscle strands, you know, gotta get that double uh, meaning going on, you know. All right, so he's got that. All right, and um, let's give him some pants, okay? And he's been naked for too long. Depending on what kind of pants and what kind of shirt he has, you know, pants just kind of start. Don't forget pockets. You don't have to have pockets. You just have to, I don't know, show that there is some somewhere. So pants, you can't really see the knees. You can't really see that, uh, that part. And so uh, I just kind of bring it out, you know, it depends on what kind of pants he's wearing. Usually the crotches are kind of hang down quite a bit. So, you know, very clean, you know, not a lot of lines in pants like this. So. Unless they're skinny pants, skinny jeans like this. You could always adjust pants too, so they look different if you want to, you know, so they don't conform to the shins or something. You know, and depending on the tightness of pants, you'll have like wrinkles and stuff like coming out of here, you know, you just have some if you. And depending on the tightness, you'll either it'll be either loose up here or you know tight. You know, so you could look like a real pair of pants and um, determine that for yourself. You know how it goes. Some folds here, and then it kind of comes down. pants. Don't forget the zipper. Again, you don't actually have to draw the zipper. You just have to let it be known that there's something there. You know, like that. There's my awful robot with no hand. There's this metallic little hand. And um, he's holding a, uh, he's holding, let's say he's just holding a shovel. All right, his handle and he's holding it. And it's kind of a weird shovel. Maybe it'll be a robotic cybernetic shovel. No, it's not, it's just gonna be like a regular shovel. All right, little spade.
There. All right. There. So, yeah, those are my proportions. Um, fun stuff, right? Easy stuff, really. All right, there we go. So, let me draw this out here. Okay. Right. So the elbow... Where the elbow is should be where the top of the head, the same distance, right? Right there. Equal distance. The forearm should be equal distance, right? Because it's kind of bent and coming towards us. There, that's actually more accurate. Um, it looks a little shorter, but it's not. It's, it looks right. Right, so equal distance. Um, where the elbow is, that's where the bottom of the rib cage is, right? And then from the top of this, in between to the bottom of the rib cage, the sternum is right there, right? And in between, this is where your pecs go, right there. Remember, uh, the bottom of the rib cage is where the belly button is. One, two, three. Right, so sternum to belly button, same distance from that is the bottom of your pelvic bowl, and then another distance, and that's where your genitalia is, and then a little bit down is where your pants are. So uh -huh. <laughs> remember, um, this is your hip square, right? This is your hip rectangle. I'm going to patent that and create it, a hip rectangle. Um, your hip rectangle. Okay, and the distance from the top of the rectangle to the top of the head should be the distance from the bottom to the bottom of the leg, not the feet, but where the joint is. That's equal distance. So knees are typically halfway through, typically. So it depends on if they're standing straight. So check that out. The shovel. Generally, the shovel is about four or five feet in length. So, and that's to the there. So I'll put like four feet, and then this is generally an 11 inch spade. You know, so four feet 11 is generally your shovel length. Okay. I don't think there's anything else. Hands vary, feet vary, um, but really that's that's it. You know. Um, did I mention, did I say how to, yeah, so the bottom of the pelvic is, you know, we go, well, how far do I go down on the stomach? Well, like I said, sternum uh, to the bottom of your ribs should be your belly button, and just count that, and equal distance, and this is the bottom of your pelvic bone, right, and it arcs up just slightly, right, and you could, you could vary that arc, you know, anyway, um, but I just do a very slight arc, and that's the top of your rectangle your hip rectangle here so bottom of your rectangle uh actually should be down no because that's gen groin genitalia so maybe like right here you know bottom down here to the, to the legs the bottom of the legs okay i don't think there's anything else uh, maybe i could go into face proportion later and just so you have like uh your eyes are set correctly, you know, and that's actually a really important um, one because a lot of people draw some really weird faces just because they don't know where the eyes and mouth goes, you know. It's really odd. Um, I would think that, you know, you don't look at a person and be like, oh, hmm, is that where the eyes are supposed to be? You know exactly where the eyes are. If somebody's eyeball is hanging out, you're like, oh, that's weird. There's something going on there, you know, so... I don't know. Um, you're all you're all capable of doing uh, this. You're all capable of knowing proportions. You just gotta remember or look at somebody else's face and be like, okay, that's where the eye goes. You know, um, somebody can draw a picture and you'd be like, whoa, that eye is off. Shouldn't be that low or shouldn't be that high. Or maybe you can't. I don't know. Maybe you really need to look at a face or something. I don't know. Yeah. Anyways, 
Ah, my back hurts. I need to sit on the couch. I need to take a break. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the stream here. Um, it's 9:30. Um, been at it for two and a half hours here. Uh, tomorrow, like I said before, the cozy mosey. I'll put it up here. The cozy mosey. Check us out on Facebook. I guess that's the symbol for Facebook. Um, we have a YouTube channel. We have a Twitch channel as well. And that's that's primarily where we're going to be doing a lot of drawing and coloring and stuff. Color theory. Um, check it out. Uh, my wife is excellent. She's a master artist. Just like me. And uh, she knows her stuff. Um, we're going to be doing a live broadcast on Facebook on color theory and coloring and all that stuff. So we're going to have a lot of fun. She's hilarious too. A lot funnier than I am. And I'm not even that funny. No. All right, so have a good night. I love you all. Uh, tune in again. <laughs>